So, today I'm going to be talking about five common causes of pregnancy loss. If you're new to my channel, I'm Dr. Marachi Ijama. I'm a fertility physician and my channel focuses on everything women's health and infertility. So if you want more content like this, if you think this is something you'll be interested in, subscribe to my channel by clicking the red button below, like this video, share with your friends and drop a comment in the comment section. Miscarriage is the natural loss of pregnancy before 20 weeks of gestation and it commonly occurs within the first 13 weeks. Some of the symptoms you may look out for when you've had a miscarriage is lower abdominal pain or cramps, vaginal bleeding when you're still pregnant, blood clots from the vagina that you'll be seeing, crumbs of blood, back pain, reduced pregnancy symptoms that you're no longer having uh, nausea, vomiting, you're no longer having the breast soreness, the breast tenderness, or pinkish vaginal discharge. Between 10 to 20 percent of all pregnancies end up in a miscarriage, and 50 to 70 percent of all miscarriages are chemical pregnancies. I've done a video on chemical pregnancies and I will link it somewhere on the screen. So if you want to know more about chemical pregnancies, you can click that and watch it. Chemical pregnancy is a very early miscarriage that occurs before the fifth week of pregnancy. And it's usually because the fertilized egg does not fully implant in the uterine wall. So the cause of miscarriage, all type of miscarriages, is actually not known. But in today's video, I'm going to share with you some of the common causes of miscarriage. The cause of miscarriages is not always known. Be it chemical pregnancy, blighted ovum, early miscarriage, any, any form of miscarriages, the cause is not always known. But for the known causes, I'm going to be sharing with you the common causes of miscarriages in today's video. And the first one I'm going to talk about is abnormal chromosomes. This is very common in the first trimester and the abnormality can be with the egg or the sperm or both. And about 65% of all miscarriages in early pregnancies are as a result of chromosomal abnormalities. Let me break it down a little bit. Chromosomal abnormalities are problems with the DNA makeup of a fetus. The fetus is the baby. <laughs> so the fetus might be missing a chromosome or having an extra chromosome or having the structure of the chromosome flawed. That's, it's, it's, it will be abnormal, like abnormal structure of chromosome or there is a problem with the DNA of the chromosome. Why this is important is because the chromosome is what makes up the unique traits of your baby, like the hair, the eye color. So this is actually very important. But when there's a problem with these chromosomes, then it can lead to miscarriage because the baby can grow normally with a damaged chromosome or incomplete chromosome. Abnormal chromosomes can cause a couple of conditions one blighted ovum i've done a video on this i'll link it somewhere here and you can click to watch it so blighted ovum is actually a positive pregnancy you you're pregnant it's been confirmed with an ultrasound scan you can see the sac but the sac is empty because the embryo is not growing because the embryo did not develop and this condition eventually leads to miscarriage. Another condition that chromosomal abnormality leads to is molar pregnancy and partial molar pregnancies. In molar pregnancies, both chromosomes are from the father and none from the mother. So it causes the placenta not to develop and the fetus too will not develop. And this will lead to a miscarriage. But in partial molar pregnancy, the father gives two sets of chromosome while the mother gives the other set of chromosome. In this case, the embryo actually starts to develop but stops developing and usually leads to miscarriage. So other conditions that chromosomal abnormality can lead to is Down syndrome and Turner syndrome. So for so many Down syndrome um, babies, they get miscarried in the first trimester. There's really no way to prevent chromosomal abnormality when your pregnancy was conceived naturally. But if it is via IVF, then yes, we can do like a biopsy before we transfer the embryo. That's another topic for another day. But for natural conception, there's no way to prevent the chromosomal abnormality. However, for women greater than 35 years old, they are actually at increased risk 
of having uh, pregnancies with chromosomal abnormalities and pregnancy loss. The second common cause of miscarriage I'm going to talk about is maternal health. So when the mother has problems with her health, it could lead to pregnancy loss. So some of the conditions that the mother can have that can lead to pregnancy loss includes uncontrolled or poorly controlled diabetes or hypertension. So if a woman has diabetes and she doesn't take her drug regularly or today it's normal, tomorrow when she checks her blood sugar, it's uh, above the sky, it's skyrocketing. Then it could affect the pregnancy, it could lead to pregnancy loss. So if you're diabetic, you have to take your drugs, you have to have a controlled blood sugar. The same goes for high blood pressure as well. If the woman also has like abnormalities on her womb, on her uterus, it could also lead to miscarriages like fibroids. Depending on the size of the fibroid, the location of the fibroid, it could actually lead to miscarriage. And also the cervix. The cervix is the neck of the womb, is the neck of the uterus, and it's where the baby comes out from. So if that hole on the cervix that the baby usually passes is actually like bigger than normal, then we usually call that cervical insufficiency and it could lead to miscarriages as well. Sexually transmitted diseases like chlamydia, gonorrhea, HIV could lead to miscarriages as well. It could affect pregnancy and lead to miscarriages. So some women have blood clot disorders and when you have blood clot disorders, the clot can uh, block the tube that's the vessel that is supplying the vessels that are supplying the womb that are supplying the uterus and then prevent blood flow to the uterus and you know it's the blood that carries oxygen so the oxygen doesn't get to the placenta and this can cause miscarriage also for women with thyroid diseases so if you have a problem with your thyroid gland your thyroid gland is here so if you have a problem with it, it could cause miscarriage, it could lead to pregnancy loss. The third one I'll be talking about today is lifestyle. So for women that smoke uh, or drink, it can lead to pregnancy loss. This is because so many studies have shown that smoking causes multiple miscarriages. Whether you're the one smoking or is your partner that is smoking or you are not even none of you are smoking at all but you are or one of you or two of you are inhaling smoke from people that are smoking around you like passive smokers it could lead to pregnancy loss then heavy drinking of alcohol when you drink excess alcohol there is some association with that and pregnancy loss as well and when you take illegal drugs i don't know if i mentioned the name of the illegal drug i don't know if youtube will not allow me post this video so yeah illegal drugs the ones you are not allowed to take by your country by the government don't take those drugs they can lead to pregnancy loss the fourth one is definitely medications so there's some when you're pregnant before you take anything into your system any medication please consult your doctor because there are medications there are certain medications that affect pregnancy for example a drug called misoprostol so some people take it when they're having ulcer and this drug is also a drug that causes the uterus, the womb, to contract and it can expel the baby, it can cause miscarriage. So be careful when you're pregnant, avoid misoprostol, avoid retinoids. So retinoids is actually a, a drug for acne, it's the go-to drug for acne. You, if you have like pimples on your face, breakouts, you use retinoid and it does like wonders. But you see, when you're pregnant, you need to avoid retinoids, it can cause miscarriages as well. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs like your ibuprofen and all the other uh, NSAIDs, they can cause pregnancy loss. If you have to take them, please consult your doctor. Let them be the ones to tell you, oh, this is safe in pregnancy. Oh, okay. Well, it's not exactly what I want you to take, but you can take it because this, this, that, that, that. Your doctor has to be aware before you take any medication. Drugs like methotrexate as well can cause pregnancy loss. The fifth and the last common cause of miscarriage I'll be talking about today is food poisoning. Some types of food poisoning can actually lead to miscarriages, like salmonella. You see, you can get salmonella from uncooked eggs or poorly cooked eggs, undercooked eggs. So be careful when you're taking raw egg I want feed farm. Be careful when you're taking raw eggs because you can get food poisoning from salmonella and then toxoplasmosis. You see, you can get toxoplasmosis from eating infected raw meats. 
Toxoplasmosis can infect your unborn baby. Even if you yourself is not affected, if you don't have symptoms, your unborn baby can have the symptoms, can be infected, and it can lead to pregnancy loss. So there you have it, guys. Five common causes of miscarriages. If you found this video informative and you want more videos like this, please subscribe to my channel, like this video, share with your friends, and see you in my next video.